Okay then, you've tuned in for another boombox video on Wayne's Electrical, and my goodness me, what a sight that is. Okay, you, uh, well, you've gone through the channel intro, and then whoop! You were confronted by a massive great pair of woofers right in your face. My goodness me, what a sight that is. Uh, if you know what boombox that is, then, uh, well, you know, you do. And uh, if you don't, then what we're going to be looking at today is a Hitachi TRK3D80. Okay, this is uh, quite a sizable box, and, uh, well, that is two of uh, five speakers, okay, or six, two of six speakers, okay, we've got four big woofers across the front and two little tweeters, let's uh, pull that zoom back then, oh, and one other thing, the only thing that's on the front of this boombox is speakers, okay, there's speakers everywhere, and uh, that's it, you know, so here we go, all of the controls and tape decks and radio are on top, and there it is, okay, just speakers and speakers and speakers everywhere. And it's all you get on the front is just flipping speakers. So, it's made by Hitachi, then this one. TRK 3D80. And, uh, well, from what I've heard with these boomboxes, the, uh, the number in the model is supposed to be the maximum power output on it, okay. And yes, that is PMPO, unfortunately, and, uh... You know, PMPO is basically a crock of rubbish. As a guideline, you want to basically take PMPO and quarter it, okay, to get RMS. And, uh, well, a quarter of 80 is, what, 20, isn't it? 20 watts, okay. So, yeah, that gives you a rough idea of, uh, you know, the, the proper power output of it, 20 watts. And there we go. Uh, but, yeah... 80, you know, that would be, uh, you know, 80 watts PMPO, but never go along with PMPO, it's a crock of rubbish, and uh, we all know that in the Worldwide Keto Massive. So, we, all we've done so far then is just basically stare at four whopping great speakers on the front of a boombox. Uh, I've got a feeling for this one I might need to actually change tripods, okay, we might need to get a bigger, uh, bigger tripod so we can fire the camera straight down on top of it so just bear with me while I do a camera uh, tripod change okay then I've changed the tripod and we stand them straight down on the top of the boom box then we can see all of the uh, what it's got okay there's some three big uh, four big speakers at the front then uh, we're not interested in that in this shot because we've already had a good old stare at those speakers on the front and that was the opening shot what we got there then is a double cassette boom box and on the left hand uh, boom box you can, uh, on the left hand cassette deck you can see it says there uh, 3D80 okay uh, this one is the recording tape deck and this one's the play only okay so what we do is we'll go for all the controls from left to right except the ones on the tape deck okay because that's pretty obvious to start off with then we've got that one right there, this little sweet square one, and that's actually what makes Sorry about that, I've pressed a button on my remote control and cut myself off. Oh no. Let's go again then. So that little button there, that's what makes the whole boom box come alive when you press that, because that's the power on and off switch. Okay. It does actually say on it operates. Uh you know, one and one and zero. Uh, so yes. So there it is. Like I say, that is the uh, recording tape deck. Okay, because it's got the record button there, and right in the middle there, we do actually have a tape counter, but that's for uh, deck two only. Okay, and deck number two is that one that says number two on it. Okay, there's number one, and there's all controls to number one then. Okay, because it is the play only uh, tape deck, it does actually have an extra wide play button on it. And then we've got rewind, fast forward, stop, eject, and pause. The two next uh, buttons along then, we do actually have what's called a 3D function, and that is that red, uh, that red button. What that basically does is when you press it, 
it just turns the uh, centre woofers on and off. That's all it does. Okay, uh, nothing to shout about, but uh, I'm telling you something. When you do actually turn those uh, centre speakers off, uh, I'm not saying the music sounds like it coming out of a tin can, but it does really affect, it does chop quite a chunk of the bass off. Uh, that surround uh, function, it's like a simulated surround, it's not proper uh, surround, it's not got a pair of uh, output jacks on the back of it where you can connect up surround sound speakers or nothing like that. Uh, it's just like a simulated surround effect. Okay, now, for this boom box we do actually have a tape type selector, but it's only a two-way one. Okay, down the bottom there you've got normal, and then up the top you've got chrome. Okay, no metal on this one. Okay, so we just keep it on normal. Uh, next one along then is for dubbing speed. Now on some other uh, Atachi 3D boxes, that's actually built into the uh, function one. But on this one you do actually have a dedicated uh, dubbing speed control there. And it also doubles as the FM mode as well. Okay, when it's down the bottom here, uh, it's either mono or high speed dubbing and when you press it up the top there it's stereo sound and normal speed for the dubbing okay so there you go but what I will say though is when you put it onto the high speed dubbing it doesn't mean that say it copies a cassette in mono it doesn't okay because as it says there FM mode is in the white so you've got mono and stereo and your dubbing speed is in red which is high and normal okay so there you go. Moving along then we've actually got a uh, function one and I'm glad to say on this boom box okay, I would be massively disappointed if it didn't have it but uh, it does actually have a four way function selector on it. Down the bottom then we've got dubbing. Okay, What that is for is when you're copying a cassette basically uh, you press it on that and it allows you to copy from uh, tape deck one to tape deck two okay and when you're not using that function you just put it on tape okay what I will say is a dubbing function can be useful uh, what's the thing I'm looking for no actually it's not that what you do is you put it on line in okay and then you put a cassette in deck 2 okay you don't connect anything up to the line in but you press record and it can blank the cassette off okay so there you go Radio, that pretty much explains itself, as does tape. And then when you're copying from one cassette to the other, you can put it on dubbing. Okay, and when you put it on dubbing, uh, this one obviously comes into play. Okay, normal speed and high speed. Basically, high speed, uh, it'll copy the cassette in half the time. The downside with that is you do lose a bit of quality. Okay, it is actually quite funny to listen to it, because it does come out on speakers when it's copying. Uh, the music comes out on the speakers at double speed, so it sounds a bit like the Chipmunks, or Pinky and Perky, or whatever you want to call them. Okay, next one along then is the all-important power uh, power slider, the volume. Okay, that one determines how hard the speakers woof on the front. And then we can uh, slice and dice the sound with five bands of graphic equaliser. Okay, down this end you've got your bass, up the end there you've got the treble, somewhere in the middle you've got mid-range and then a couple of others just to tweak it up a bit. Okay, four band on this one then. We've got long wave down the bottom, medium wave, short wave and then FM right up the top. I don't know why that's on long wave, it should be right up the other end there. And this here is to tune the radio. Like a lot of my other boom boxes, this one is tuned in with a piece of string. You turn that and there's basically a pulley in there. I tilt this uh, up a bit. There's the uh, thing there. Although it looks like there's two in it, it is actually technically one. But you've got uh, two windows on this. Okay, one of them is for uh, long wave and medium wave. That'll be the bottom one. And then the upper window will be for short wave and FM. Okay, we've got the FM stereo light up there. So when you tune into FM uh, station and it's uh, you've got a strong signal and it you locked into the stereo that little light comes on okay and that basically is it for the top of the uh, the 3d80 okay now just coming into view there at the bottom of your screen we do actually have a little row of LEDs there and that's like a, a uh, an LED 
based VU meter. Okay. That is for the right hand one, and if I bring it along here, you've actually got another one. Not those ones, but there they are, right there. Okay, you actually see it says level, level indicator on it. The ones in the middle, then, uh, I'm not quite sure why that picture's going like that. It goes all sort of funny. It's probably because I've got the zoom right in. Okay, right, the centre red one in its operation. When you press the power button on, that red one in the middle lights up. When you activate the 3D system, or that red button there, uh, the left hand green one turns on, and then when you press the surround button, which is that black button there, that green one turns on. Okay, so, you know, it's all sort of flashy and all that business. And there you go. Okay. This one does actually have surprisingly nice sound on it, okay. You put it in a corner, because, you know, boomboxes like corners. And, uh... Put a line in and on the back of it and then turn it up a bit. You do actually get some nice, nice boomy sound come out of it. It does actually have a, quite a nice deep bass on the lower volume level. And there we go. Now what I'm going to do, is we're going to nip off for a little break right about now. When we come back we'll spin it around, we'll have a look on the back of it. Uh, all the specifications and uh, how many batteries it takes, all that lot. All the jacks are on the back of it and all of that stuff. Okay, so don't move. We'll have a little break and then we'll come back and have a look at that. Bear with me a moment. Okay then, back after the break, and straight off then, we're on the back of it, and there's a little uh, specification plate for this one. As you can see, it says model number TRK-3D80E. Uh, there's all these specifications in for all the bands that are on it. FM 87.5 to 108, as per usual, and then all of the others. Uh, power source, it says 12 volts, 8 times IECR20, or GA... JIS Sum 1, that's basically your D-size battery, okay. Uh, 240 volts, 50 hertz, 27 watts. Now, do remember that thing I was saying about PMPO. Okay, you take it and quarter it. Okay, the, po the PMPO for this box was uh, quoted at 80 watts. Okay, so a quarter of that is 20. As you can see there on the back of that one, it does actually say 27 watts just there. Okay, so that would be 7 watts to make it all work, and then 20 watts for just uh, with a thumping audio. Okay, so if you want to carry on looking at that, then press the pause button now, and we're moving on. As per usual, we've got all that mambo-jambo on there. Uh, you know, disconnect the power before removing the cover. A lot of parts are, are accessible when exposed. Okay, and then disconnect the mains plug from the supply socket when not in use. That's pretty obvious. Moving along then, we do actually have some kind of funny little uh, switch on this. And unlike other boom boxes, the power cord of one of these is permanently wired into the back of it. And if I uh, just zoom in on that, you will actually say see it says an AC or battery. Okay. So, when you run it on the mains, you flick it over to the left, and then when you run it on batteries, you flick it over to the right. Okay. This one is it is rather a manual affair on the back of these, because, like I say, the uh, power cord is permanently wired in. And just next to that, we've got the battery compartment. Well, when I say battery compartment, it's a two-in-one function, isn't it? Because inside there, you've got, actually got a compartment for storing the mains power cord and a UK 13 amp plug in there okay and you also put your eight times d cells in there just up a bit then we've got a couple of line in jacks rca phonos right there red is right and white is left so there you go 
Now, around about this point in time, the linings were sometimes referred to as CD. Okay, because this boombox was out on sale in the 90s, early 90s. That switch next to it then is like a beat cut once again. Okay. There it is, B and A. This one's actually called RIF. And I think that's basically uh, radio interference or something or rather. Okay. It's, it's very similar to beat cut. There were different names for it. Uh, some call it beat cut, some call it riff, and some call it other things. Okay, or beat cancel, that was another one. Beat cut, beat cancel, riff, whatever. So that's rather much around the back of it then, rather basic around the back. There's your line-ins. Uh, what about headphone socket then? Well, here's a really weird thing, okay. If I just set the camera down there and turn this boombox around, it is actually on the side. A silly little hole just there. A three and a half millimeter jack plug right there. There it is. So there's your headphone socket right there then. Three and a half millimeter stereo jack. It's on the side on this one. Okay. There it is. If you ever use wondering where, if it has a uh, headphone jack, then yes it does. And we've actually got a nice piece of design on the side there. It says 3D Super Woofer. It would have been nice if they actually infilled that with gold, like they have on the speaker grills on the front. That would have really finished it off, but no, they couldn't be bothered. So there it is. As you can see, it sort of it leans at a funny angle. Okay, the front sort of uh, aims upwards and the back sort of leans back. And then the top of it is completely flat. Well, sort of. You can see the keys for the cassette deck sticking up there. And there's your carry handle. Okay, so there it is. Oh, I think what we're going to do next then, whip out the tape measure and uh, measure this one up. Right then, for the width, we are going to be looking at, it's quite a wide one. Let me set that down there. And we are going for... About 24 and a half inch wide. Okay. 24 and a half inch wide or 600 and... We might as well call it 630 millimetres. Okay. Just don't forget you've got this extra bit sticking out the side here. Did I include that on the other one? No, I didn't. Let's pull that across a bit then. Okay, right. Well, you call it 25 and a half inch then. Okay. Or uh, 650 millimetres then. Okay, for the width. For the height, once again, we'd do two heights because you've got to do one with a handle up and the other one with a handle down. What I'm going to do for this one, because all the controls are on the top, I'm going to ignore the handle down size. Okay, because if you was putting this under a shelf, you wouldn't want the shelf there because you've got to reach in to operate the controls. You've got to allow for the tape decks to open up as well. Okay, so I'll put the handle up. You can see there's only that much space between that door and the handle. So I'm going to, on this one, because we've got all the controls and things mounted on top, I'm going to ignore the handle down dimension. Let me just uh, put the camera on the tripod and uh, we'll get into that. Camera's on the tripod then. Right, let me uh, zoom in on that for you. And then we'll do the handle up size. We're not going to do the handle down size. Okay, now for handle up size, we are looking at... Call it 12 inch. Okay, 12 inch or 300 millimetres, okay? For that. See when it says that uh, little red mark on there? If that stays out, there you go. It's 12 inch or 300 millimetres then, like that. Okay, I know it looks like 14 from where you're looking at it, but trust me, if I get down on the floor and look straight across, it's actually 12 inches tall or three, 300 millimetres with the handle up. Like I said, I'm not going to do a handle down size because you've got all the controls on the top there. You've obviously got to get your hand in there. You've got to allow for the tape doors to open up and things like that. 
what we've been looking at in this one then for getting on for 20 minutes is another nice little boom box well this is actually going up the size a bit now okay so what we've been looking at in this one then is a Itachi TRK 3D 80E okay like I say when you're playing a boom box shove it in a corner because they like corners do boom boxes and it really does beef up the base uh, a little bit later on then we're going to be doing more boom boxes and uh, yeah they get bigger than that trust me okay boom box deluxe is a member of the worldwide ghetto massive and uh, this is Wayne's Electrical of course uh, we're doing the reshoots in full HD 1920 by 1080p now if you watch this on my original boom box deluxe channel then in the video description there's a link give that a click and it will come through to this one you can watch it in full HD I uh, don't do backlinks to the old channel, there's no point, okay, because chances are I was holding the camera and that camera is 640 by 418 the slightest movement and the picture's all over the place. Uh, yeah, so we to, that's why I'm borrowing this camera, because it's much higher quality, 1920 by 1080p, stereo sound on the audio and all that lot, and I can actually pick the camera up and move it around and right, and the picture doesn't shake all over the place because it's a semi-professional Canon camera. I'm off. Okay, it's getting on a, a bit late at night now. Oh my goodness me, I didn't know it was that late. Quarter to two in the morning. Right. What I do for boom boxes, eh? Get one up in front of the camera at quarter to two in the morning. I've got to go to bed. Right, so have yourself a good look at that. Stay tuned because on another month, we're going to be getting another box up in front of the camera. We'll have a look at that all over. And uh, get the tape measure out and do all that jiggery pokery with the tape measure. And there we go. Well, if you haven't subscribed, then by all means do so. Press that subscribe button and you won't miss out on next boombox that's coming up. Okay, because there's going to be plenty more. And, uh, yeah, we'll go from there then. This has been another Wayne's Electrical Production. Full HD, of course, 1920 by 1080p Thanks for watching this one.